Hello all, good day. In this video, we are going to see the demo on cloud identity and access management. This is the agenda of this video. We are going to do these hands-on labs in this video. Step number one, log in to the admin console and GCP console as the super admin. Super admins is nothing but the chief administrator of your GCP organization. Open a browser and log in to GCP console using console.cloud.google.com. Here I am using my super admin username and password. Now we have entered into the Google Cloud console. Once you log in, cross check the organizational hierarchy. Here we can see under vsparks.com organization, we have three folders that is learning, research and test. Under learning folder, we have got two projects. Under research and test folder, we have got one project each. Now it's time to log into the admin console using admin.google.com. Since we have already authenticated in the first tab, it will permit us directly without asking any user credentials. This is our Google admin console and we can see two users and these two users are our super users that was created at the time of organizational setup. Step number two, create user identities either manually or using GCDS. GCDS stands for Google Cloud Directory Sync. For this demo, we'll be creating the user identities manually. Here, create the user, user-1 at the rate of vsparks.com in the admin console. User is created in the admin console now and it means a new Google account called user-1 at the rate of vsparks.com is created in our organization. Step number 3. Assign roles to the user identities that was created in the previous step. Attach the user to the project level and test the same. Open the GCP console where we have logged in as a super admin. Now the super admin is going to give permissions to user 1 under project number 1. Go to the navigation menu, select IAM and press the add button. Under the new members field, enter user-1 at the rate of vsparks.com. We are going to assign the viewer permission to that user. This directly means that user-1 can view all the resources under project number one, but he cannot access the other projects and folders. We can test the same. Open another window and try to log into GCP console as user number one. Here we can see user 1 is able to access only project number 1. Other projects and folders are not available from our organization. Also, we can see user 1 is able to view the resources in project number 1, but he cannot create or modify anything in project number 1.
Step number four, assign roles to the users at the organizational level and test the same. So in our last step, we have assigned permissions only to the specific project. Now we are going to assign the permissions at the organizational level, that is at the top level. Again, go to the super user console, remove user number one from the project level and include the same user at the organizational level. This time, we are giving user1 an editor role. We will test the same now. We will log out and sign in back user number 1 in order to see the latest changes in effect. Now we can see user1 is able to see all the projects under the organization because its permissions are defined at the organizational level. Let us try to create a machine because he is having an editor role now. As we can see, all the tabs are enabled which means he is having necessary permissions to create a VM now. Well, that is for this demo. This is the summary that we have discussed so far in this video. Thank you from vSparks and thank you for watching this video.